Welcome. The following is a series of videos provided by HighQuest Solutions showing a step-by-step -step approach to these tasks. Installation and setup of HighQuest Solutions stream gauging cableway kits. Setup, deployment and removal of HighQuest Solutions double drum gauging winches. Cableway and double drum winch inspection and maintenance. As workplace health and safety is paramount, it is recommended that workers will require the following. Safety footwear, gloves, high-vis fluorescent clothing, communication devices, including satellite communication for remote sites, protective headwear, sunglasses, sunscreen, protective eyewear, ear protection, first aid kits, four-wheel drive vehicles complete with vehicle recovery equipment, PFD, personal flotation device, fire extinguisher and fire blanket for hot works, potable water, traffic management and manual handling equipment. Part 1. Installation and setup of HighQuest Solutions stream gauging cableway kits. The following video is taken at a simulated cableway site at our factory in Sydney. It can be used as an instruction in tandem with our cableway installation guide as part of our technical training delivery plan. Part numbers mentioned in this video commentary are referenced to this guide. Please note that the site selection, installation and commissioning of a cableway on a live site will require a suitably qualified civil engineer to be engaged to oversee and sign off on all tasks. This is essential. I will now take you through the various steps in the erection of various cableway components. As a minimum, the following equipment will be required by the installer on a live site. Excavation equipment, electric drills, tag for earth leakage, metal drill bits, gasoline power generator with gasoline, masonry drill bits, electric grinders, tag for earth leakage, cable cutters, cable swaging tool and swages to suit 2.4 millimeter and half inch diameter cable, spanners and wrenches, boat for erection of main cable and endless traversing wire on a live site, cable tension meter, tools, a general set required. These cableway kits have been provided in two categories. For bank to bank spans up to 50 meters and those for spans up to 150 meters. One, attachment of post head sheaves to support posts. This is undertaken using the four 12 millimeter bolts, nuts and washers provided in the kit. On the operating side, the post head sheave must be installed in such a manner that the adapter for the winch arm mount faces the stream. Similarly, on the non-operating side, the black delrin pulley for the endless traversing wire should also be facing the stream. Two, installation of dead man assemblies. Connect the dead man bolt to the dead man I-beam using the two M22 hexagonal nuts provided. Each dead man is then secured in concrete with reinforcing bars defined by the local civil engineer. The triangular ankle bolt plate, LAT30-03, must protrude from the concrete block in a vertical position, approximately 300 millimetres above the surrounding ground level. It is important that the dead man assembly is aligned in the same plane as the line of the main cable post head sheave and main cable to ensure there is no side load on the fittings. On our simulated site, as you can see, the dead man is connected to an existing concrete slab for this demonstration. This process can be repeated on the opposite side of the stream. Three, erection of cableway support posts. On a live site, this is undertaken by excavation of the bank and installation of reinforcing bars defined by the local civil engineer along with the four 250 to 300 millimeter long anchor bolts provided in each kit. This process can be repeated on the opposite side of the stream. The cableway seen in this video has been set up for training only and for this purpose you can see the post flush mounted to a concrete slab using masonry anchors. Also, this is very important. The cableway post fitted with a double drum winch adapter must be installed on the operating side of the cableway. 
The post head sheave housing the black Delrin endless traversing wire pulley is installed on the non-operating side of the cableway. The base plate of the cableway post assembly in contact with the concrete structure should be approximately within 300 millimetres at the same level as the top edge of the triangular anchor bolt plate LAT30-03 mentioned in the previous and following sections. 4. Attachment of dead man assembly to support posts. Once the concrete has set on the post supports and dead man installations, the next step can be commenced. Using the 12mm bow shackle provided, part SC102-01. Attach the swaged end of the 12mm diameter backstay cable, LAT30-06, to the hole on the lower side of the triangular anchor bolt plate, LAT30-03, protruding above the ground from the buried dead man assembly. Next we attach the 16mm diameter double clevis assembly, SC103-01, to the post head sheave assembly using the 16mm diameter D-shackle SC102-02 provided. The backstay cable LAT30-06 is then looped around the half inch diameter thimble SC035-03 provided and secured using the three wire rope grips provided SC104-01. Note well, the nuts on the wire rope grips must be contacting with the loaded end of the main cable and not the tag end of the main cable. The half inch diameter thimble SC035-03 is then connected to the 16mm diameter double clevis assembly SC103-01 using the pin provided on the assembly. The backstay cable can be partly tensioned. Final tensioning is undertaken once the main cable has been installed. This process can be repeated on the opposite side of the stream. 5. Attachment of main cable SC104-19 on each bank, attach the 24mm diameter double clevis rig provided SC103-02 to the centre hole of the triangular anchor bolt plate LAT30-03 protruding above the ground from the buried dead man assembly. On the operating side of the cableway, position the cable reel provided and feed the end with the half inch thimble and swage through the post head pulley. The main cable is then run to the non-operating side of the cableway with the half inch diameter thimble SC035-03 and swage connected to the centre hole of the triangular anchor bolt plate LAT30-03. Attach the cable jaws tension meter hand winch to the main cable and top hole of the 24mm diameter double clevis LAT30-03 using a 12mm bow shackle. After achieving the required tension reading on the tension meter, the main cable can be cut and secured using the half inch thimble SC035-03 and 12mm wire rope grips SC104-01 provided. These grips should be attached within 50mm to 100mm from the half inch diameter thimble SC035-03. Note well, the nuts on the wire rope grips must be contacting with the loaded end of the main cable and not the tag end of the main cable. Final tensioning of the main cable can now be undertaken using the adjustment on the 24mm diameter double clevis rig provided SC103-02. Ideally sag should be no more than 0.87% of unloaded total span. The tensioning items can then be removed from the main cable. Once the main cable is tensioned each backstay cable can be adjusted using the adjustment on the 16mm diameter double clevis assembly, part SC103-01. It is essential that following tensioning, both cableway support posts remain in a fully vertical position. 6. Double drum winch supporting arm 
LAT22-02. This is easily installed on the operating side post using the four M12 bolts, nuts and washers provided. Part 2. Set up, operation and removal of HighQuest Solutions double drum winch. HighQuest Solutions is providing two models of this winch for this project, namely the DDT700 Barossa and the DDT1000 Riverina. This video will demonstrate a DDT700 Barossa using the simulated cableway mentioned in an earlier video. The procedure for each model is identical. Operating manuals provided for each model should be used with this video for training purposes. 1. Attachment of double drum winch to cableway. The double drum winch can be attached to the adapter on the operating side cableway post using the four M12 bolts provided with each winch. Two, attachment of traveller block assembly, LAT24 to main cable. This should be undertaken with the LAT24 as close as possible to the operating side post with a temporary rope attached to the LAT24 to ensure it does not move towards the stream. Firstly, remove the 4R clips and pins holding the lower end of the LAT24 assembly. Attach the upper end of the assembly, the large main pulleys on top side of the main cable, and secure using two upper pins and R clips. The LAT24 must be installed with the traversing pulley closest to the operating side. Three, erection of endless traversing wire. The endless wire 2.4 mm diameter, SC104-02, is supplied separately to the double drum winch and has one head fitted with a swage and thimble. From the operating side, feed the swage end of the wire through the traversing pulley on the LAT24 traveller block assembly and run the wire across the cableway to the non-operating side. Remove the keeper pin above the black door and pulley and feed the wire over and under the pulley. Reinstall the keeper pin. The wire can then be run back to the LAT24 traveller block assembly with the end terminated on the pin and R clip on the LAT24 facing the stream. The other end of the wire can be cut and a swage and thimble provided attached to the wire. The wire with swage and thimble is then inserted into the slot on the double drum winch traversing drum. The temporary rope holding the LAT24 can be removed. 4. Erection of sounding amograph cable. Ensure the lower two pins and R clips are still removed from the LAT24. Feed the amograph cable from the sounding drum to the LAT24 and through the lower sounding sheave on the LAT24. Reconnect the lower end of the LAT24 traveller block to the upper section using the remaining two pins and R clips. Connect the C1 connector breakaway device to the hanger bar holding the current meter tail fin weight assembly. Connect the angle plug to the current meter. Connect a gauging counter to the terminals on the double drum winch using the lead provided.
Check current metre fan rotations are being seen on the connected counter. 5. Winch operation. Engage the traversing drum using the lever on the winch and position current meter at the point where the gauging commences, either left or right bank. Zero the distance counter prior to commencement of the gauging. Position the current meter at the initial vertical for observation. Engage the sounding drum, zero depth counter and lower current meter and wait to the stream bed. Undertake velocity measurements at prescribed depths. Raise current meter and weight to surface. Engage traversing drum and move to the next vertical. Repeat until gauging is completed. Once completed, raise current meter and weight above water level and return to the operating side. 6. Removal of the double drum winch from sight. Using a rope, temporarily secure the LAT24 traveller block to the main cable support post structure to ensure the LAT24 does not roll towards the stream. Remove the Amograph sounding cable from the LAT24 pulley. Remove the C1 connector and breakaway device from the hanger bar holding the current meter, tail fin and weight. Remove the lower end of the LAT24 by removing the two R clips and pins. Reattach the lower end of the LAT24 to the upper end using two R clips and pins. Remove the endless traversing wire from the traversing winch drum and clamp to the main cable support post using the M8 bolt washer and slot provided. Secure the endless traversing wire swaged end to the operating side post using a cable or chain with a padlock. Remove the temporary rope. Remove winch fasteners and remove double drum winch from sight. Part 3 – Inspection and Maintenance This video covers the regular inspection of both cableway components and also both models of double drum winch. Cableway – The following procedure adopted is based on ISO 4375-2014 Hydrometry – Cableway Systems for Stream Gauging United States Geological Survey – USGS Stream Gauging Cableways by C. Russell Wagner. This video can be used with a procedure provided by HighQuest Solutions, which includes templates for inspection reports. Cableways should be inspected at a minimum frequency of one inspection per year. As a minimum, the following items should be inspected for conformance on both operating and non-operating sides of the cableway. SAG. Unloaded sag should not exceed 0.87% of total span. It may be necessary to establish date and marks on each side of the stream to allow for visual indication of the degree of sag. Deadman. Check for any corrosion on the triangular anchor bolt plate LAT30-03 and connection to the encased deadman. Backstays. Check the 12mm diameter backstay cables, clevis and fittings are not damaged or affected by corrosion. Main support posts. Check for damage and any corrosion. Main cable sheaves. Check for any corrosion or damage. Ensure grease is present on the pulley and axle. Winch arm. Check that the arm is secure and not affected by corrosion. Traveller block LAT24. Check all pulleys are running free and the assembly is not damaged or affected by corrosion. Main cable. Check for any damage or corrosion. Endless wire traversing cable. Check for any damage or corrosion. Erosion. Check for any effects on dead men or cableway support posts. The inspection report must be documented, signed off and forwarded to a local supervisor for any necessary repairs. Double drum winch. The models DDT700 and DDT1000 require minor maintenance at a recommended frequency of six months as follows. The website operating manual covering both models are a recommended reference for more detail on inspection and repair tasks. 
If faulty, the following steps can be taken to rectify the problem. Check the brake pads and ensure they are not worn out. Ensure the thickness is no less than 2mm. Layer wind screw. Wipe the layer winding screws on both sounding and traveller drums with a clean rag and solvent, preferably trichloroethylene. Inspect for damaged threads and repair as necessary. No lubrication is normally required, but a light spray of WD-40 or similar can be used. Drum gear teeth. The drum gear teeth should be lightly lubricated with grease. Sounding drum slip ring. The sounding drum slip ring should be wiped every three months with a clean dry rag and solvent such as trichloroethylene, then lightly sprayed with a non-insulating lubricant such as WD-40 or similar. Electrical system. Using a stream gauging counter and shorting the centre pin on the angle plug connected to the ammograph cable with the outer wire layer, check pulses are being received on the counter. Thank you for your attention. We hope this footage is useful going forward. Please contact our local representative direct for any technical assistance in the future.